Ja, Mike Mike's Daily Podcast. F- F- episode 1365, 1365, and I'm Mike Matthews, I'm Alive. Broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mott, the last place on earth. Today, Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, plus we will bring you a segment called, what are we going to call it today? We'll call it the bottom of the charts. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's the bottom of the news charts. The the bottom f- eater feeders eaters people. Mike's Daily Podcast. But I wanted to sing to you about what's been going on at Uber. Man, that place is run by a goober. He's sexist and stuff, and his name is uh, Kalinick. There's so many words that you can rhyme with Kalanick. Stick. Uh, Mike's Daily Podcast. Dishes. No. Hey, so today's the day that I'm going to go Mike's to Comcast. Daily and I'm going to yell at them. Podcast. It's the thing every year. It's like Christmas. Yeah. It's like the one big holiday of the year where Mike gets mad. Mike becomes angry, Mike. Mike becomes the Hulk. Mike smash! And I'm going to go and I'm going to tell them, Hey, all I want from you guys is internet. You got me signed up three or four years ago because you promised me a great deal because I just wanted internet. Look who just walked in. And that's all I want. Why did you just increase my bill by 10 bucks? Last year they increased it by, ooh, like 40 bucks. And I was able to get it down a little bit. But so this is the year. Because if we, if we try and call, they sent me, in fact, oh, I don't have it here. Shoot. They sent me a, a letter. Look who else walked in. That said, uh, do, do, do. Ice cream truck just went by. I don't know why I didn't open it. Uh, they they sent me a letter saying, ah, this, we've got all these sound effects going on because we have a parade of loud sound effecty people. They sent me a letter that said, Mike, we are going to increase your bill. Call us here to keep your great promotion. Well, I will never, ever, ever call Comcast because they... Will And here's today's podcast picture. They will keep you on the line for days. You get people with accents. You cannot understand them. They learned how to speak English at the worst English speaking school classes. Finally, the podcast picture today, as we've blown past every character that walked in. It, and and the doorbells ringing and people are walking in and sound effects are going on often in my face. Soap opera, organ, ding 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 sounds. The podcast picture today is of the wonderful Bison Bentley, and he's one of the myriad of characters that walked in. Hey, Mike, it's Bison Bentley. Dinner. Yeah, I just introduced you. Yeah, look who else is he? Do you know that? Ah. Uh, it's one of my favorite people in the whole of the world. Hi, Mike. I make the delicious root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Thank you. I could use a little root beer. We poured a little bit of root beer on Marco yesterday for the Marco Minute. Who else is here? Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all do? And to this Colonel Fiddle player tell you what. What? This show is a parade of idiots. Wonderful. So, yeah, that's I'm going to go yell. Any advice you can give me, this Colonel Fiddle player? Well, I'll let Benita take care of all that stuff. That's right, Mike. You got to go in and you got to be forceful. You got to tell them, this is what I want. Ah, okay. Hey, somebody posted on Facebook today, so you know it's true. That uh, Cumulus Their stock is just imploding It's just going down, down, down Oh, and they also Showed 
somebody posted the Heinrich Maneuver, New Mexico Senator outfoxes Sessions. Um, Senator Heinrich, I'm not able to share with you. And it's this. So that's the thing now with your auto rolling videos on Facebook is that they have to when they when they're playing you're suddenly you're watching this Facebook video that you're like I don't know if I want to watch that but then it's showing you and in, because they know that it defaults to sound off you're like oh now they're showing me script now they're showing me words I don't know if I want to watch that so the the person posted something on the New York Times about how Cumulus' stock is going in the trash. So I own some Cumulus stock, and they split the stock, or they, they did a buyback or something where I was going to make even less money than what I... I'm. You know what? At this point, I'm just happy I like the, the look of the paper that the stock certificate was printed on. I'm just going to have that and go, oh, look at that. Look at that dream that once was... Because it's worth nothing. It's nothing now. Cumulus just screwed it all up. And they own so many radio stations in the Bay Area. So that's... I don't work for them. So I can kind of say these things. But it's my podcast anyway. And I can cry if I want to. Finally, let's get to the news. Uh, The news segment today, which we called the bottom of the charts. Uh, The podcasts... And all the podcast pictures and everything you can find at the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. You can help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy that helps us out. There's also the PayPal. You can help us out that way, too. All can be found at mikesdailypodcast.com. And now, let's get to that segment I was mentioning, aforementioned. Oh, my gosh. The bottom of the chart. So, the big news today is... That uh, the House Majority Whip Steve Scalise was shot, and multiple congressional aides were also hit by a gunman with a rifle who opened fire at a GOP baseball practice in Virginia this morning. Uh, last reported, as of this recording, Scalise was in stable condition. The gunman was shot by U.S. Capitol Police, apprehended and taken to the hospital. Uh, officials said. Senator Mike Lee told Fox News that the gunman is dead. He was shot by a U.S. Capitol Police apprehended, taken to the hospital, and uh, Representative Roger Williams, a Republican of Texas, was seen taken by taken from the field in a stretcher, but it was unclear if he was struck by a bullet. That's what we have as of this recording. Nearly 200 Democratic members of Congress said they would file a lawsuit against President Trump this morning, alleging that he is uh, continuing his ties to his business empire, and that violates the U.S. Constitution. The unprecedented legal action will, will accuse Trump of violating the Emoluments Clause of the U.S. Constitution, which prohibits federal officials from accepting gifts or titles from foreign governments without congressional approval. The lawsuit will have the greatest number of congressional plaintiffs of any lawsuit against the president in the nation's history. This according to Michigan Representative John Conyers, the House Judiciary Committee's top-ranking Democrat. We do this not out of any sense of pleasure or partisanship, but because President Trump has left us with no other option. His worldwide organization includes more than 500 business entities across at least 20 nations, includes hotels, golf courses, and apartment buildings, many of which have conducted business with foreign governments. Foreign governments have paid for events at Trump hotels and maintenance fees for condo units in Trump condo buildings. Although the Trump Organization has pledged to donate foreign government profits from its hotel business to the U.S. Treasury, a company policy document released last month indicates that Trump properties will not verify whether individual customers are representatives of foreign governments on foreign government business because it would be impractical and diminish the guest experience of our brand, quote unquote. Finally, in March and April, hackers tried to infiltrate computers of think tanks associated with Germany's top political parties. According to Bloomberg, a year later, scammers set up a fake server 
in Latvia to flood German lawmakers with phishing emails. And in 2015, criminals breached the network of the German parliament, stealing 16 gigabytes of data. Although there's no definitive proof, the attacks have been linked to Pondstorm, a shadowy group with ties to Russian intelligence agencies, raising the possibility the Kremlin might disrupt a September vote in which Chancellor Angela Merkel, Russian Vladimir Putin's strongest critic in Europe, is seeking a fourth term. There's increasing evidence of attempts to influence the election by Russia says the head of BFV, Germany's domestic intelligence agency. We expect another jump in cyber attacks ahead of the vote. While, po- sh- while polls show that Angela Merkel is, or Angela Merkel, is likely to defeat the left-leaning Social Democratic Party, the concern is that the Kremlin will try to strengthen the far-right alternative for Germany and turn the estimated 2.5 million voters who speak Russian against her. And it is confirmed now that was it 39 states in America, our uh, voting systems were hacked by the Russians. Nothing was changed. This, according to the news podcast I was listening to this morning, to the point, nothing was actually changed. And I think this was also Bloomberg. Bloomberg News had this information, but um, that is something that the Russians are definitely trying to do: influence elections across the country, across the world. As we go outside a cafe, anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. It's a short podcast today. If you want a long one, listen to the last one. Where we discussed the wonderful post game championship winning festivities at the uh, Oracle Arena winning on Monday. But oh gosh, there's a whole thing I didn't get into today. I was talking to a friend of mine, said a, something a woman had heard his pride that. Don't do me like that. Don't do. Uh, sorry, I went Tom Petty on you there for a second. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me all about how her roommate is a pathological liar, and I was telling her, "Hey, I work with someone that's a pathological liar, or I have worked with someone." And yeah, I was telling her some advice that that's helped me. But yeah, that's a thing. And and we were discussing how our president is one too. And it's that narcissistic uh, the psychological deal where they can never, ever be wrong. And they do the thing that I hate this expression, but they double down constantly. And if you try and call them on the carpet, they just obfuscate and obfuscate. And her roommate does it. And the guy that I worked with does it. And our president does it. So it's a thing. And they are vampires. That's another thing. They, they feed off the energy of us people that tell the truth, that believe in the truth, that don't like to be lied to. And I think our president, that's one of the kicks he gets from twittering, from tweeting all the time, is uh, he, he likes, he's a vampire feeding off of the American people that still love him and will follow him into the depths of hell. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot that I... <laughs> Let's see if I can pull this up in five seconds. Um, Remember that? I was telling you how our president said that he could shoot somebody in broad daylight and nothing would happen. I have that. Oh, I have that right here. Here we go. Here we go. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters. Okay. It's like incredible. What a wonderful thing to end the podcast on. Don't worry, my friends. Things will get better. I believe this to be true. As long as we speak the truth. And don't obfuscate with this whole fake media thing, uh, calling the real media the fake news. That's all wrong. Uh, And don't, yeah. Gotta find the truth. Find the truth. Wrong. And, you know, I think we have the truth at our hand. We can verify. That's the thing I'm trying to tell you, is to verify. Verify what you see. And be be sensible. 
Okay, next show, it's going to be Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. And I hope the best for that uh, representative that was shot, Scalise, Steve Scalise. Wish the best for him. That's just, you know, we can bicker back and forth about policy in Washington, but, I mean, to try and kill someone over it? I mean, what is this? Are we Neanderthals? Are we... Are we barbarians? This is going back to the... Our country was like this 200 years ago where politicians were shooting each other. But no, we, we should have... You know what I'm saying. Anyway, have a great day. Let's end, let's end on a positive note. Um, ah, okay, that's a good and positive note. I don't know what note that was. Maybe that was C or something. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Verify.